Hi guys, it is, um, gosh, I don't even know what day. It's Thursday at one o'clock and this is uh, Mary with Stamps and Lingers. And we're gonna have us a little video today. And I'm happy if you are joining me. I see some, uh, some folks coming on, so that is excellent. I'm hoping that you're at home and staying safe and um, hashtag social distancing yourself. All right, let me uh, get over here and see if we're transmittalating here. I was just reading this message from YouTube that said, due to COVID-19, we're doing fewer human reviews. And so that may result in us removing vi videos that do not violate the community standard. So hopefully this won't, won't get there. But any hooch, we'll see if we are out. It looks like we're live, so that's a good thing. And let me click on this, that way I can see comments as they come in. All right. Hi, Stephanie, appreciate you joining from Ohio. Hope you are um, having a very good week so far. All right. Okay, so the card that we're going to make today is with the Rise and Shine. It features really quite heavily the Rise and Shine. Hey, Karen, hey, Christine, appreciate you joining. This is the Rise and Shine stamp set. It's from the second release of the Celebration products. This is free with a $100. It's a very, very cool set. You can see it has got a bunch of images. And this one is really fun because these are reversible. Actually, this is a reversible image. This is reversible. This is reversible. So that means that you can, um, and actually these are as well. That means you can stamp this direction clean the stamp off and then flip it over on your block and stamp the same image, but left-handed or right-handed. So that's kind of cool. Ah, good morning, Barbara. Appreciate you joining. Hi, Jeanette and Pam. Thank you all for coming. I appreciate it. Um, I hope you all are staying safe. Um, we're trying to social isolate, distance, however you want to say it, as much as we can, but I had to take the kitty to the vet yesterday. She's got a UTI and had to have meds. So we had to go do that, but boy, there's, you call from the parking lot and they call you in one at a time. So they're doing a good job. Um, I was glad for that. So anyway, Rise and Shine. This is the card that I've made with this. Now, this actually coordinates with the Cup of Cheer dies, and this was a carryover from the 2019 holiday catalog. So if you already have this set, you are already ready to go to cut these little... Um, these little coffee cups out. I have a little bit of bad news, breaking news. As I finished making this card, I saw an update that said that this die set is, um, they've sold out of it and apparently TBD on the restocking, but right now it's looking like they will not be restocking. Do not despair, may come back. This was supposed to be a carryover set. So in theory, um, we should have gotten it back at least through the end of the occasions catalog, but I suspect that like so many things that everyone is experiencing, COVID-19 is probably affecting that. The good news is, is these little cups are pretty darn easy to cut out. Just leave this center handle. So you can just do a fussy cut, but leave the center handle solid. So it's not like, you know, the world ending here. And that's really the only piece of this die set that I've used on the card. So you should be good to go. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can make this. Let me show you the inside right quick. I just stamped some of the flowers uh, from the Rise and Shine stamp set, and then I did the same for the envelope. Okay, so let's get started. All of this will be on my blog tomorrow, so you don't need to make any uh, notes about sizes or anything like that. I'm working with So Saffron, Blommy Blue, and uh, yeah, mm -hmm. Bango, Melon Mambo, sorry, gosh. And I've got some strips of the So Saffron Neutrals. This is the Subtles DSP, 6x6 DSP in Gam. And then I have another piece in Balmy Blue. I've got a couple of mattes in the Melon Mambo. And then we have a So Saffron card base. And of course, we'll have an envelope because that's what we do. Okay, so let's make our card front first. 
and it's real easy. These are half inch wide strips of the DSP and all we're gonna do is adhere them with liquid glue um, at a very perfectly spaced interval across my piece of balmy blue, okay? Now, when I first did this, I thought I would make everything even. So I, I, I first laid it out where my gaps were about the same width as the width of my DSP. And I couldn't make myself like that. So you can see how this would have looked if I had laid it out like so. I just didn't like it. So, But when I pushed the intervals down to make more matte-like, then I liked it real quick. So let me show you how to do this. It's very simple. Very, very simple. This would be a great way to use up some scraps, and that's what I did here. I made some smaller pieces, shorter pieces, not smaller. Shorter is more like the correct word. And we'll just go ahead and get these laid out here for you. And then we're just gonna use liquid glue to adhere them and then trim the excess with our paper trimmer, right? Very easy. And it's kind of a different look, right? I mean, it's not your normal card front but it's fun, I like it. I like how it turned out. And you could play with this however you wanted. Of course, I probably didn't make enough, but that's okay, because I've got more, and I can cut more, because I am that good. I am just that good. Let's put the long one down here. There we go, okay. So I did not mean to talk about COVID-19 because it seems like we ought to have a break from that. That's about all there is to listen to anymore, right? You turn the news on, it's depressing. You open up Facebook, it's depressing. I mean, basically you could go out on a limb and just say it's freaking depressing. Uh, trying to trying to stay positive, but I have to I have to acknowledge that it is um, not really all that easy. Now, I had a piece, an extra piece, so let me make sure I've got some here. Let me go ahead and cut some more. Again, these are just half-inch strips. Very easy and quick to cut with our paper trimmer. Of course, you gotta put the blade down, there we go. And, how how is everybody doing? That's what I actually wanna know, is how are things going? Have you got kids at home that you're trying to keep entertained and keep their classroom activities going and figuring out new math? I mean, my Lord, new math. Who knows? Who even knows anymore? I've seen kids trying to do new math, and I'm, I'm boggled, so I can understand how they are boggled. But hopefully they're getting some life lesson at the same time. That's what I'm mostly hoping, is that they're also getting some life lessons while they are busily getting their booking, their book schooling. Okay, chat disconnected, please wait while we try to reconnect you. Oh, and I am buffering. Am I losing you guys? Oh dear. Mm -mm -mm. Hopefully you're still with me. I'm just gonna keep going like we're still recording. And hopefully you guys will be back here in just a second if you are in fact gone. Um, unable to connect to chat. Please try again later. I don't know what's going on. Uh, well, I still show that people are watching, so I'm going to keep going, okay? Let's just pretend like everything is fine. Now that I've got this sort of laid out, I'm going to use liquid glue to adhere and what I'm doing is just putting the liquid glue right on my card front. And this card front, again, just so you remember, is balmy blue. So it's a piece of balmy blue cardstock. You could certainly use white if you didn't particularly care for this color scheme. But I think it's kind of pretty and springy. You do want to make sure that you get um, liquid glue as close to the edges as you can so that the edges of your um, strips will stay adhered when you get them cut, okay? And you can see I'm, I'm not measuring. I'm totally not measuring. I'm just eyeballing it. 
And I'm using the old hope as a plan, where hope is what I hope it will do, and that it will end up looking even when I get done with it. How about that? Uh, I don't know how to reconnect chat, so I don't know. Let me see if I can do that. Tars and feet. Well, I don't know, guys. I'm hoping, um, and I don't see a way. If somebody could, like, I don't know, give me a thumbs up or something. I'm not sure if that works in, in live mode. But if you'd give me a thumbs up that lets me know that you're here and able to hear me and see me, that would be awesome. That would be really, really awesome. Because otherwise I feel like I'm just talking to the, to the ethernet. Uh, maybe there's too many. It's possible, I suppose it is possible, that there are too many people on because everybody's trying to work from home. I saw a cute meme today on Facebook that said the dogs around the world are rejoicing because their humans are stuck at home with them. And the cats are like, when will this staff get out of my house? I do not know why they are here and haven't left yet. I'm ready to, for them to go away. And that seemed about right, actually. All right. Yeah, it's still showing disconnected and still showing... I still see 11 people showing, but I suppose that could be a that could be an artifact. All right, once we get all of these adhered with their liquid glue, then it's just a matter of um, trimming the excess in the paper trimmer. And we're going and then once I've done that, then I'm going to cut the whole piece down to my actual card front size, okay? So let's get that good and adhered. Make sure everything's down good. And then we'll pull up our paper trimmer. And for this first one, the first one, it's really, you can't really put it against the top. So what I did is I'm just eyeballing the edge of my card base on the, um, actually, I'm just gonna, I know that this is bigger than I want because it is four inches wide and I really only want three and three quarters. So I'm just gonna, pull it in a little bit, make it straight, and go ahead and cut that off. Okay, and then push these aside. And then I have a straight edge to start making the rest of my cuts. So what I want this card front to be is three and three quarters by five and uh, inches, by five inches. So I'm going to Right now it is five and a quarter. So I'm gonna cut off just a little bit here. Like that. And then this one I want to be three and three quarters, so I'll go ahead and cut that off just like that. And what that does is give you nice sharp edges. Okay, and sharp edges are always the best kind of edge for a card, I think. Unless you're tearing it, and then that's a whole different kind of card all the way around, isn't it? Okay, here we go. So there we have our card front already done. We'll set this aside. And then I have another piece that I'm going to, um, this is the Balmy Blue DSP that I talked about. And you could use any color combination that you like, but this was for a challenge, and so I did it. I probably would not normally put Melon Mambo in this mix, but it actually turned out to work pretty good. Let me get rid of some mess here. I got mess. I have message. I have message. And I need to get rid of the message. Yeah, I don't even know if we're transmitting anymore. But we'll see. Okay, so let's set this aside and make us a few cups. And I want you to see how cool these uh, reversible dies are. So I've got the cup image that has the hole in the middle so that I can put a sentiment. And I'm going to cut one. I'm going to make one in, um, uh, let's see, so saffron. And I'm just going to stamp it right there like that. And then I'll clean it off. 
These are the reversible dies I was telling you about. And then I'm going to pick it up and just turn it the other way on my block, okay? And then I'll stamp the second cup in balmy blue, like so. Okay, easy peasy. Now, with my Melon Mambo, I'm gonna add a couple of accents. I'm gonna use the, star, the um, sunburst image from the Rise and Shine set. And I'm gonna pull this to me just a little bit so it may be out of, out of frame. And I just want to um, line it up over the Like that. We'll do the other same way. Okay. And then one of these cups holds coffee and one of these cups holds tea. This cup is going to hold tea. Except once again, it did that weirdly, and I don't like it. I don't like it. I do not like it at all. So let me see if I can, if I can make that a little prettier. So we'll do it on the other side. Okay. I'm going to clean this off. Because apparently I had a fin hair. I think I must have had a fin hair. Ah, I must have had a fin hair. And yeah, we'll stamp it again. Okay, that's a more better. That's a much more better. Like that. I like it much better than what I had. All right, now we'll stamp our sunburst again. There we go. That's better. Now, I'm going to, because I do think a lot of people probably already have the Cup of Cheer dies, I'm going to go ahead and cut these with my Big Shot. I'm going to bring that over to do right here like this. Okay. Now, the fun thing about this die set is it's got a die for both left-handed and right-handed. Oh, I didn't stamp coffee. I'll do that when I'm done left-handed and right-handed. So we'll put the, I guess this would be the left-handed one, wouldn't it? Okay, there we go. And just get that lined up. I do hope they, I do hope they restock that, this one because it's a fun little set. I like it. Okay. And then we'll bring it back and use the other die, which is for the other direction cup to cut out our tea, our tea cup. There we go. to stamp coffee on the so saffron mug and I'm going to tidy up my cut a little bit there okay like so and then we'll close this up all right so we do have a cauliflower rice emergency happening. I've only got two bags of cauliflower rice left and that is um, not enough to weather the zombie apocalypse. So I'm just cutting this top off because I was a little uneven and, and that annoys me that uh, extra border there. So actually you can see it's a pretty easy fussy cut, right? Not too hard at all. Okay, so now we're going to take 
and lay this out so that you can see how it is. And it's going to go on a Melon Mambo mat, so we'll go ahead and put that on right quick. A lot easier to see everything when everything is done. Yeah. Yeah, poor little Katie, my little old kitty, she was telling me, finally telling me yesterday in no uncertain terms that she was not a happy kitty. And so you can imagine how much happier she was when I picked her up and took her to the vet. She loves riding in the car, by which I mean she hates riding in the car. And so when I picked her up as a, well, she was sound asleep. In fact, she was so asleep and so quiet and happy that we actually thought maybe we had just imagined the issue, but we had not. Um, and so we had to take her to the doctor. Fortunately, I mean, I, this probably sounds really bad, but fortunately the thing that he had to give her, he was able to give her as shots because God knows I hate giving pills to cats. And so I was relieved that he could just, you know, he could just fix her up right there. <laughs> and they were pretty easy. And I can tell you that by the end of the evening, she was feeling better. So whatever he did, the antibiotic and the anti-inflammatory made immediate head roads into her discomfort, which is always good. Okay, so that looks about right. We'll just push it over just a little bit. So all I've done is taken two lengths of Whisper White Solid Baker's Twine and kind of made a loose loop here. And I'm just going to use a little liquid glue to adhere it in a few places so that it stays where I want it to stay, more or less, sometimes less than more. And we'll just use some of that there like that. And then, of course, my glue will pick up the baker's twine in a way that I did not wish to have. Okay, so there's that. Now I'm going to pop this on over the top of the baker's twine with dimensionals, and I wanna show you how I do that. The hardest part about popping anything over something else is getting the dimensionals in the correct place over the poppy so that the popper is correct. So here's how I do this. I know that I want to place this panel about there, okay? So I'm going to put some dimensionals on the card front itself versus on the piece. I'm going to put them uh, like that. And then I'm going to catch the baker's twine with my glue covered fingers. Because, you know, it must be Monday. It's not Monday, is it? It's not Monday, is it? We'll fix this. I can fix this because, you know, it's just not that hard. It's twine. It's twine. It's not, it's not that big of a deal. Here we go. We're going to start a fresh, apparently. Yeah. Some days there is knots in the baker's twine, and the baker's twine does not cooperate. And apparently that is going to be today. So let's go ahead and do that. Maybe it's good that I may not actually be transmitting. We don't know. We don't even know if I'm transmitting, do we? Okay. So there we go. We'll make some loops like that. We want the loops above the panel, so not so much below it, which means I don't have to go below it at all. There we go. And now it's stuck. Okay. Whew, that was a close one. I'm going to go ahead and wipe my fingers off. I think that's my problem. I think that's my problem right there. So I've got my a couple of dimensionals down. I'm just going to put one more of my little half dimensionals like that. And then very carefully pick up the covers. Preferably without grabbing the twine again. Since it's still trying to get stuck good. There we go. This is very disconcerting because I really, truly do not know if I'm transmitting. If only there was a way to communicate on YouTube. You know, I did see, or my husband saw, that there is concern out there that the internet might go down because everybody is trying to work from home and entertain themselves. Okay, so I've just put the dimensionals. You can see the dimensionals on there. I've put them on. I've taken the covers off. 
And now I'm setting my um, panel over the top of them, lining up this edge like that. And that leaves me with my twine up above. Okay, so now all I'm gonna do is lay out my coffee cup and my teacup like this. And adhere them with liquid glue. Easy peasy. Oh, goodness gracious. Let me, let me refresh over here. Maybe that's what I need to do. Let's see what we get if I refresh. Hmm. Yeah, it's not looking good for the home team. Really not. Okay, so I've just put some liquid glue on the back of the coffee cup. And I'm going to adhere it to the panel. And I'll do the same with the tea cup. Like so. Okay. And that is that. I will make a sentiment. Now the sentiment that I'm using is uh, let's hang out soon, by which I mean after the social distancing is gone and we have no internet. Well, I'm not sure if I'm transmitting or not, guys. I just got to tell you, I am not sure. It looks like I am. Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, hey. Oh, my goodness. You guys, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, there's no telling what things I've said. Okay, now I see. My internet, one of my internets went down. Okay, great. Thank you so much, you guys. I Thank you for sticking with me. I cannot begin to tell you how much that means to me. I couldn't see anything to see to see internet or emails and my email, my internet on my computer was dead. So apparently it was transmitting fine off of the phone. Okay. Whew. Okay. So anyway, what I was saying is this is my sentiment, which is let's hang out soon. And it actually is hashtag when we get done social distancing. Um, but we're going to stamp it in Melon Mambo. I've got a strip. It's five eighths inches wide of Whisper White. And we're just going to stamp it right in the middle of that. And then I'm going to bannerize it. Yeah, see, you guys were telling me everything was fine, but my computer was not telling me that you were telling me. You see what I'm telling you? Okay. All right. So now I'm going to make some banner ends. And I'm first going to just cut off equal amounts on both ends so that the banner is about the right dis length. And here's how you bannerize with snips. So you go right in the center and you just snip in a little ways. And I kind of try to make note of the fact that about how far up my scissors I'm going so I can do it on the other side. And then you just snip from each of the corners. There we go, like that. Okay, and then we'll repeat, repeat on the other side. Like so, and like so. And yes, whoever was saying that the dies are gone, the dies are in fact gone. But this is a pretty easy fussy cut for these little teacups, so you can do it. I know you can. Just don't worry about cutting out the handle. It'll just have to cope with that, right? And then my um, sentiment is going to go like so. So I'm going to put a dimensional under the left end like this. Thank you, Julie. Appreciate that. Kathy, I will respond to your email later. Apparently, um, and then so I've got a dimensional under the left end and some liquid glue on the other end, and that's going to adhere my banner like so. I love this little set. It's so cute and so cheery, and I have many friends I'd like to send this to. Actually, I have a lot of people I'd like to spend a little time drinking a cup of coffee with. Okay, so I'm going to add a small Melon Mambo glitter dot, glitter enamel dot, right here, right here, like that. Okay, so there you go. There is our card front made with our Rise and Shine. 
So on the inside, I've just got a plain piece of Whisper White. And I'm gonna stamp a few flowers. The flowers are from Rise and Shine. And I'm gonna start with my So Saffron, and I'm gonna do three or four, actually three. I'm gonna wipe that down because I've made a mess there. I'm gonna do three So Saffron flowers. Like that. And then I'm going to do some Melon Mambo small flowers in the middle. Now, on my first one, I um, I used full strength Melon Mambo on the inside, and I didn't like it very much. So I'm using Stamped Off Once Melon Mambo this time. See what I'm saying? Like that. Okay. And we'll put that aside, and then I'm going to put some... Balmy blue. Yeah, Kathy, those UTIs are gone. They're they're terrible right now. It's not uh and you know she's got like some kidney failure anyway, and so I was I, I'm not gonna lie, I was afraid yesterday when we took her that she was done. I was really hoping we were gonna bring her home. So to me it was a relief to hear she had something fixable ish. Actually it's quite fixable. Okay, so these are little balmy blue leaves because everybody has balmy blue leaves in their garden, I'm sure. Speaking of gardening, almost time to plant. I've got plenty of plants that need to get out of their starting spot and go in the garden. So that is next on our list of fun stuff to do is to plant some stuff. Okay, so let's see. Let me put a leaf on this one. And maybe another leaf on this one. There we go. Okay, so that's what all we're going to do for the inner liner. Okay. Pew, pew. All right, now I'm going to adhere that to my Melon Mambo mat. And then I'm going to show you what I did to my card base. Preferably before I screw up and put all of this in it. Okay, there we go. All right. Now, before I put that in, I'm going to go back with my large flower image and my So Saffron ink, and I'm going to stamp the front and the inside of the card base with this same tone on tone color. So, so saffron on so saffron. And I'm using a sticky note to protect the back of my card base. Just as a little mask, like that. And I'm just going to stamp all around there. And that's just going to give a little bit of interest. Let's get rid of that. A little bit of interest to the exposed card base, right? Because it was more than I wanted. I liked the smaller card front, right? But I didn't quite love the amount of just plain card base I could see for this one. So I decided to put some flowers on it. Okay, now that can go away for a minute. And we'll just keep going around. And you know you don't have to do the whole thing because your card front and then on the inside your inner liner will hide all of that centerpiece. So this is not very technical right here. Now, you know, this is also a reversible flower, so if you didn't want the hole in the middle, you could just turn it over and stamp a solid flower image. It would end up being like the small flower is. But I kind of like this one. All right. This is the first year I'm actually planting flowers to grow. I don't usually do that because, well, I don't know why, but we've actually got room for flowers, and so I 
have some lavender leaves or leaves <laughs> lavender seeds coming and I've got some other little flowers whose name I don't remember and I'm sure they'll be stunning when I get them grown we bought a couple of um, raised bed doohickeys from Sam's that we've got outside the house right outside the house um, so that's where I'm going to put flowers and maybe some herbs some herbs some herbies now this is the inner liner that I'm doing. Very, very much the same, in fact, identically to what I just did on the card front. So not very, not very exciting. Not very exciting. Did y'all see that there was a earthquake in Utah and sent the, all the Stampin' Up! people went home yesterday because did like a 5-7. I don't know, folks. I'm thinking it's the locusts and the zombies next. Just saying. Really, the zombies are the ones that I'm the most worried about. Locusts are kind of a pain, especially if you're a farmer and an eater. You know, because if the farmers have a problem, then we have a problem. But zombies would be worse. I mean, brain eaters? Oh, my good. Speaking of brains, let's talk about those kids who are all in spring break at the beach. First off, where are their parents telling them to get their butts home and stop sharing the COVID-19 amongst themselves and anybody else they come in contact with, especially in Florida, where there is... Not to put too fine a point on it, quite a high population of the high-risk demographic, right? I mean, goodness. Why aren't the cops running those kids off? Why aren't their parents controlling them? I don't know. It's weird. We're not doing a very good job, maybe. We're maybe so arrogant. We don't, we don't think we can get it. All right. So there is my card front and my inner liner, and I'm just going to adhere the inner liner in. Maybe if I can make the glue come out. Come out, glue. Come out, glue. There we go. Okay. Make sure we get it on right side down. Wrong side up. Okay, there we go. Fingers are sticky again. And I'm going to take a couple of um, rhinestones and adhere them in the middle of my flowers. Now, if you were hand delivering this, you could actually do this on the front as well. But I decided not to do that just in case I need to mail it or that I send it to someone who would want to mail it. So, there you go. Goodness gracious, come here. Come here, you. Come here, you rhinestone, your rhinestone. Okay, there we go. Alrighty, now we're gonna pop the card front on with some dimensionals. And we're almost done, ske. Okay, I think I am a complete and total half dimensional, not half wit, half <laughs> dimensional convert. I seem to be going through them like Grant took Richmond, but that's okay. Okay, here we go. Ah, and we'll just get these popped on, and then we'll do a quick envelope, and we'll be done. Yay! And I'll be back on Saturday night on my Facebook page with another project. Hopefully one that hasn't had something sell out before I could get it posted, hopefully. Yeah, I think things are running amok in our country right now, in a big way. All right, here we go. And so there you are. And I saw somebody say they liked this better than they thought. I agree. I wasn't sure, especially when I was trying to do um, half inch strip, half inch space, half inch strip. I didn't like it at all. Um, there is a sample in the Celebration Flyer, the second Celebration release, that uses a similar kind of a thing, although they use a white background and a solid cardstock stripe, but I liked the gingham. Okay, so there's the card. We'll do a quick envelope.
And the front of the envelope is, as you might imagine, covered with flowers. We'll just stamp a few of the so saffron flowers. Like that. And then some stamped off one melon mumbos. It's weird how this is, it's not updating very good. Uh, let's see what I've got here. I'm going, I'm just holding for just a second to see if I've missed anything. Okay, we're here, all is well. Makes three of us, I do the same, it's only the Lord only knows where I put them. Yeah, mm-hmm. Here's something I'm worried about. What do y'all think? We're isolating ourselves here to protect us and others too. Should I be making things and sending them out or is that a possible way to send viruses? Yeah, I think I think what Julie said is right. Let it lay around a few days. I am worried about getting the mail out of the mailbox. I mean, you know, yeah. The problem is, and then of course, you know, we also you hear so much conflicting information because I'm not really sure anybody really knows enough right now. But we will figure this out like we figure everything out, right? Um, no, that is correct. They have no control over their kids, apparently. I believe, my personal opinion, it's for the lack of wooden spoons at a much younger age. But that's just me. And probably not an opinion shared by all parents. But I think a lot of kids these days have gotten away with way too much. Way too much as little children people. And so they feel like they're entitled. It's their spring break, they wanna to go to the beach, and so they're going, no matter who. And the, of course, you know, the other piece of it is, is they've, everything they've heard tells them that their demographic is completely safe, and they don't really think too much about the fact that their grandparents aren't safe, or even their parents, depending on how old everybody is. So, um, and also, oh, by the way, they've just shown that younger people are getting it as well. So th there is no safe anymore, I don't think. I think the deal is, is you, you are probably going to get it. And if you're lucky, you are young enough that it won't be a terrible thing. And with all of that yammering that I just did, I do seem to have misplaced my strip of DSP, probably because it's sitting right in front of me somewhere. Somewhere right in front of me. It's prob it was right here, I swear it was. Oh wait, what a dork. It was laying upside down and it looked like a piece of cardstock instead of my DSP. Good lord. Good lord. And of course, you know, it's allergy season on top of everything and so you know, I don't know about you guys, but I have enough allergies, especially to pine pollen, which is really starting to ramp up here in Georgia. So I spend most of the spring and much of the summer and half of the fall sniffling. Um, so, you know, there's always the, is this it? Is it the big one? Is it the coronavirus? Is, have I got it? And then you think, no, come on, be real. You don't have a fever. You're not coughing. It's just allergies. But it's... A little worrisome, right? So, go in your craft room, shut off the news, don't listen to the the naysayers and the death knell ringers, and make a card, and wash your hands, and then send it to somebody to help make their day a little nicer. And here is a good one, I think, would be a good one to send to a friend, so that you know that these times will end, and we can hang out and have a little cup of coffee, and a cup of tea together as friends. All right, guys, I appreciate you. I'm very sorry for the ramblingness of the middle of the video there because I didn't know whether I was transmitting or not. And I hope I will see you on Saturday evening on my Facebook page at 7 p.m. Eastern. Don't know what the project will be, but we'll figure it out together. All right, thanks, guys. Y'all stay safe, stay healthy. Wash your hands, social distance. Bye-bye.